This is the story of Irish mothers like Susan Cooper, who under Irish law are not recognised as the parents of their babies. At this moment in time, Alex has no mother, legally. I am not her. entitled to anything that a normal mother is entitled to. I'm not entitled to maternity leave. And Catherine May also has no legal authority to parent her child. I have no role. If she needed surgery, I can't sign for it. I shouldn't sign her into school because I'm not considered her mom, which is unfair. Advances in assisted human reproduction have given hopes to millions of people who thought they could never have a child of their own. And more and more couples in Ireland are looking to surrogacy as their last chance to have a baby. Surrogacy and similar technologies are increasingly acceptable to a wide range of, of our population and I think it's an important clinical service for patients for the future. There are different surrogacy arrangements depending on the infertility of the couple who want the child, known as the commissioning couple. In one scenario, the commissioning father provides the sperm, the commissioning mother provides the egg, and the resulting embryo is carried by a surrogate mother, who has no genetic link to the child she delivers. In the second scenario, the commissioning father provides the sperm, but the commissioning mother has no genetic role. The egg is provided by the surrogate mother, who also gives birth to the child, making her the genetic and gestational parent. Because surrogacy involves more than two parents, it raises complex questions about which parent has legal responsibility. Under Irish law, the birth mother, that is the surrogate mother, and her husband are considered the legal parents of the child. It's widely assumed that the legal mother would be the woman who gives birth to the child, but we don't actually have any judicial determination of that or any legislation to that effect. Um, if the surrogate mother is the legal mother, then and if she's married, it's, her husband would be regarded as the legal father by virtue of a presumption of paternity in Irish law. This would make it uh, difficult, though not impossible, for the commissioning couple to establish a legal relationship with the child. It took many years of medical intervention for Catherine May to have her daughter. Robin was born through a surrogate mother using Catherine's egg and Michael's sperm. We decided on surrogacy because we had been down the route of IVF on numerous occasions. We'd had seven attempts in four different countries and uh, two of them took but later failed. And the final time that we uh, investigated IVF, we worked with Indian doctors in South Africa and they suggested surrogacy. As surrogacy isn't allowed here, Catherine and Michael found a specialised clinic in India where an Indian woman called Geeta was paid to carry their genetic baby. I suppose a lot of people have difficulty with the, the ethics, perhaps, of surrogacy and um, the utilisation of somebody else for our dream. Um, and I completely understand that. But the experience for both Geeta and for Mike and I have been, has been completely, totally, and utterly life-changing. Um, she w is, is a widow, um, and as a result of um, our arrangement, you know, her life has completely changed now. Um, her, her, the way she's able to provide for her children has completely changed, and obviously our life has changed as well. Despite both parents being Irish citizens, it took 18 months for Robin to get a passport. Robin's Indian birth certificate records Catherine and Michael as her parents. But under Irish law, it's the surrogate who is the legal parent. They were forced to go to the High Court, but even then they could only establish a legal link to Michael. We have a very, very strong, very, very loving relationship. We have a beautiful, gorgeous, adorable child, yet she only has one parent. She has a mom, she has a dad, she knows that. But when she's old enough to understand, how is she going to feel? So under Irish law, the legal mother of a child like Robin, that is the person who should be signing for her education and her medical treatment, is a woman and her husband who live thousands of miles away with whom she's unlikely to ever have any contact. Under the Irish constitution, 
the surrogate mother has rights to custody of the child. To tackle complexities like this, a commission was set up in 2000 to examine a legal framework around the whole area of assisted human reproduction, including surrogacy. The group reported their recommendations in 2005, but seven years on, nothing has been done. The Commission on Assisted Reproduction recommended that the best approach would be to presume in law that the child is the legal child of the commissioning couple um, unless this is not in the best interest of the child. So this would establish a legal presumption in favour of the commissioning couple and would make it much easier for them to establish a legal relationship in relation to the child. Part of the problem of legislating for the parents of surrogate children is the complexity of the moral issues involved. Commercial surrogacy is banned in almost every European country, forcing many Irish couples abroad. There are real concerns for the women in other countries, especially countries where uh, the, uh, the wealth of the people there is much less than it is uh, here for us in Ireland. There's, there's a whole issue around the world of medical tourism. And so we have, there's concerns about the exploitation of women in that type of situation. Susan and Anthony Cooper's little boy Alex was born through surrogacy in India last summer. His birth came after the couple struggled for years to have a baby. I held my dreams in my arms. He was just the most handsome baby I ever saw in my life. I know everybody probably thinks that about their own child, but it was just unreal. Couldn't believe, couldn't believe I was going to be taking this little person home. But Susan was unable to take Alex home. Although his Indian birth certificate recorded Susan and Anthony as his parents, the Irish authorities disagreed. The embassy basically told us they couldn't deal with it because it was a surrogacy case. And the passport office wanted us to go through the courts. So Anthony had to come home to go through the court system while myself and my son remained in India. In all, it took five weeks. And we were lucky that it only took five weeks. Experts say recent guidelines issued by the Department of Justice do little more than reflect the status quo. And that means families have to finance a court case. Well, I would certainly welcome the attempt to clarify the law in relation to surrogacy, but I don't think the guidelines go far enough. I would like to see the Minister, in conjunction with the Department of Health, introducing legislation to implement the recommendations of the Commission on Assisted Human Reproduction and to put in place a whole framework for dealing with assisted human reproduction. Well, I think the status quo in Ireland at the moment is probably the worst of all the options because you have children in limbo who aren't able to Get, uh, get taken care of in all of the ways that other children uh, who are uh, citizens through normal uh, birth um, are able to. And so it's something that really needs to be addressed in one direction or another. No one knows how many surrogate children are living in Ireland, but they are being raised in a legal vacuum and the state may not be able to ignore the issue any longer. I know I'm Alex's mum. I couldn't love him any more than any other mother loves their child. I mean, he's just my world. My problem with it, more than me, I mean, I'm an adult, I can deal with this, I, it, it's Alex. He's going to turn around to me someday when he's older and say, how are you really my mum if the Irish government says you're not? Emotionally, how is that going to make him feel? That's a major, major concern for me, more than my own emotional well-being about the whole thing, you know? We will take the situation further because Robin is entitled to a mom and I am her mom and she's entitled to that and if we have to fight the Irish government in Ireland or in Europe for that right for our daughter we will do it. So it could take a High Court challenge to force the issue of surrogacy in Ireland leaving the judiciary rather than our elected representatives to legislate for change. <laughs>